Hi, and welcome to the Market Alert for Tuesday, the 18th of October 2022. So stock saw on big negative delta squeeze, or was it because the economy is as strong as hell? That's the rhetorical question, isn't it? Um, personally, we all know what the answer to that is. Uh, the, the hell, you know, the economy is going to hell in a handcart, cost of living, inflation, etc. And the market's gone up as bonds suffer the longest losing streak in history. The chase is on. Historic short squeeze triggered by biggest buy program in history. And what happens next? Sellers pounced and uh, took advantage of the uptrade today, squeezing, raising cash, taking out those that were short. But the interesting thing in this headline for me is uh, biggest buy program in history. So, uh, yeah, it's computers that are moving the market to the upside, not the economic data or the economic reality that uh, we're all facing at the moment. Also, the market was assisted by uh, Hunt yesterday, removing everything that uh, uh, the former chancellor had actually put in his mini budget. This was to bring calm to the market. It worked for one day, but one economic news item isn't going to change the current trend or the cost of living crisis or rising prices. And in fact, he actually removed the um, assistance, the energy assistance uh, from April, uh, whereas uh, that had been put in for two years. So that's going to spark some fury. Uh, knowing that uh, we're only going to get uh, government assistance through this winter and there is nothing from April. So again, he's fudged the books, hasn't he? Because he's been able to take that money that uh, was set aside for uh, April or next year, 23-24, and uh, make it look good. So again, it's just smoke and mirrors, isn't it? Uh, again, in creative accounting. Economic news today, well, we haven't really got anything worth shouting about in this lot. I'm not even going to go through it. There's no major economic news items. Uh, the only thing that's tentative is the federal budget balance, uh, and that's out whenever they want to put it out. So uh, that could uh, spark a move up or down in the Dow, but otherwise nothing to report there. Gold-silver ratio, moving back to the downside as uh, silver has managed to move uh, higher than gold overnight. That's about all, and uh, hold its own during yesterday's session. So let's have a look at uh, yesterday's uh, up move and uh, see what happened in the Dow. So yesterday you can see that the Dow moved higher and uh, overnight has also moved higher. It's traded up to the 78 and the 50 EMA as uh, prices continue to bounce and squeeze to the upside. 30 minute chart uh, yesterday. Interestingly enough here, I haven't done this yet, but let's just have a look. Uh, yesterday's range before uh, we opened and traded uh, yesterday for the Dow was just a mere... 380 points uh, in the Dow. Overnight, let's just have a look at this. And we go from the open there to here. And we have 410. So whilst everybody's asleep, uh, they've managed to move the Dow uh, up uh, 410 points, more than they did during yesterday's uh, short squeeze uh, session there. A market coming back to the R1, but still looking fairly bullish, isn't it? When you look at this, all we need to do is to attack the 89. And then we move up to uh, this high down to this low. And this puts in place uh, all of these other FIB retracements. And you'll see here we've got a confluence uh, just at that 50 and uh, 78 that the market is trying to get through. We've got the 89, which is drawn off this one and projected back. And then above this, we've got 62 uh, here where we had the last uh, pivot that's uh, left, be left behind. And then um, we can see we've got 78, 89 and then the 200 there. But uh, well, interesting to see how long this lasts. Uh, certainly not the Santa rally that generally starts after um, in sort of mid-November. A lot can happen in October. It is the month of crashes, as we know from history. But at the moment, the market is moving to the upside overnight. Uh, and even the selling there is uh, very small. But then there aren't too many participants in the market at the moment, is there? In the German DAX, similar picture. Trading through the 50 EMA overnight. And you can see there 89.62. Uh, that's uh, a couple of uh, pivots. One from here, one from there. Where they're drawn back to... So at the 89% retracement of this area here, as the markets attempted to move higher on the overnight, yesterday moving up quite nicely, momentum moving to the upside. 
in the uh, 30 minute charts uh, if I can find it so uh, there we go we've got uh, again just like the Dow the market uh, moving to the upside um, which you can see has already moved uh, 200 points on the overnight already that's a big move yesterday uh, we see the market uh, moving up uh, 200 300 points just th just over 300 points in the DAX in the 30 minute not a red bar in sight after the initial either side of sorting itself out in the morning and then the uh, uh, evening when everybody was getting out of the position the market trading sideways and then we see prices uh, moving back uh, actually it's moved a bit higher than that so if we just have a look because uh, when we kicked off uh, after the Dow uh, we're up um, where are we 194 yeah so just 200 points thought it looks more than that but it's not 200 points on uh, the Dow uh, overnight already and if we go back to the daily chart there's a lot more on the upside if it can get through uh, these two here I mean there's no news today to move the market to the downside so it could comfortably move uh, to the upside unless there's something of a geopolitical nature in the five minute chart you can see the move overnight there big move to the upside it's had a bit of a breather but it looks ready to uh, move again we're way above the high and if we do trade down we'll probably just trade to the high as we did yesterday and the market move higher and i'll just show you this uh, from yesterday uh, as the market uh, traded all the way up to the high came back and then uh, sat there before just moving down uh, slightly but uh, straight through this uh, overnight we jumped over it in fact as you can see there gapped above it came back filled the gap and then uh, we bounced off it so again it's looking very strongish uh, for the market at the moment trade so far this week nothing to shout about a bit like last monday unfortunately I had meetings yesterday uh, 62 61 4.5 on the profit factor and 50 52 winners two losers um, that's all i managed yesterday but i'll be taking advantage uh, today hopefully and uh, like I say, similar to last week, slow start. Last week was only 78 on Monday, but by the end of the week, 1,200 uh, on uh, in profits. So uh, like I say, slow start, but uh, not to worry. In the S&P, similar picture. Market uh, above the 20 bar moving average uh, as uh, prices move higher. Just a quick look at the Fib retracements. We're at 78 on this one as well. Uh, 89 there then the high then the 50 EMA if prices continue to move higher there's no reason why they shouldn't given uh, the uh, no major economic news items today no Fed nothing CPI tomorrow from the UK but uh, that's tomorrow and you can see the S&P there also piling on Be interesting to know why this has moved uh, so strongly overnight but I suspect with it being quiet and the programs the short squeeze program that we saw in the headlines moving prices to the upside, just buying uh, derivatives on the overnight. Uh, the FTSE also uh, sideways to higher there, uh, 62.78 area as well. Not uh, any great move overnight, about 50 points there, what we can see. Yesterday moving strongly on Hunt's uh, scrapping of uh, the former Chancellor's uh, mini budget and helped no doubt uh, with this move overnight uh, as well. In the currencies, uh, GBP, JPY continues to move higher. Dollar weakness uh, yesterday and uh, overnight. Uh, the market sideways uh, uh, there, as you can see, just getting a bit of support there at uh, yesterday's close. Meanwhile, yesterday moving up uh, 200, 300 uh, points on the GBP, JPY, supported by uh, Hunt's uh, statement yesterday. The same for the pound, moving back to that uh, 114, which again is just uh, where... We had that uh, low way back in um, March of 2020 when uh, COVID first uh, struck. So 30 minute chart for the pound yesterday coming off the DP. You can see there the market moving up uh, strongly as well. A couple of hundred points overnight. Bit of a pullback going on. Same as the GBP JPY to the close of uh, yesterday. And finally, in the metals, uh, responding to the dollar weakness by holding sideways during yesterday for silver, as you can see there, spike up and uh, then support sitting at the DP overnight, moving higher, but uh, now making its way back to the 200 MA. In the gold market, also a similar picture there, 
and 30 minutes uh, yesterday you see a bit of a sell-off in gold which is why the gold silver ratio moved higher let me just go back to the 30 minute silver yeah you can see that the sell-off in silver was nowhere near as uh, pronounced as it is in the gold market there trading back to the close and then bouncing off this uh, overnight US dollar down and down on the overnight as well let's have a look at the 30 minutes so there's the move down interestingly enough gold went down with that move that's interesting isn't it uh, they, they went out of sync there and a uh, bit of a bounce in the dollar overnight uh, and then down taking out to yesterday's low but a bit of buying coming in there at the moment and oversold in the 30 minute chart Okay, let's uh, see what happens today. Let's see if uh, Hunt's uh, proposal is dismissed by the market, and you know, particularly the scrapping of the energy uh, program and support uh, for April next year. I think that's going to come back and haunt them, to be honest. But uh, we'll wait and see. Okay, that's it for this one. As ever, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.